Okay, you are welcome to this special lecture. And uh, I'm going to speak of the university industry cooperation and especially I comprehend on the students' point of view. So there are some ideas in the, my, my lecture of the company's point of view too, but, uh, but the most, mostly I speak of from the students' point of view. How to help students to prepare for working life during their academic years. Albert Einstein has said that uh, life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. A few words about myself. I have uh, been a professor in the University of Oulu. Now I am an emeritus professor, taking care of my PhD students mostly. Here I have been 11 years visiting professor. And uh, I have done the research work in my life. I have teach, I have taught many courses, many different kind of courses during my academic years. And uh, also I have been an entrepreneur. 12 years altogether, full-time entrepreneur and uh, the whole of my working life I have been part-time entrepreneur. So why I tell this in the some next slides, uh, you need this information. So the plan of the content of this uh, special lecture is uh, the cooperation of universities and industry. And uh, we all know that uh, it's very important to the universities to get this cooperation. Also the companies can benefit a lot of this, this cooperation. But from the student's point of view, this cooperation mostly means soft transfer from studies to the first job. And uh, so what does it mean? We come to, to this, uh, during this lecture, we come to the even details of how can you help of this kind of transfer from the studies to the first job. So there are many ways how universities uh, build this kind of bridges to companies. And mostly universities uh, build these bridges just for getting funding for research in the university and uh, trying to sell their research results to the companies. So, also one important thing is that they can find the ideas, what are the contemporary topics which should be studied right now. So, however, one of the most important beneficiaries of this kind of cooperation are the students. Because it is not only, only the getting the job after the studies, but working with universities during the studies. Building the networks, what you need in your working life. These are very, very important uh, things in your life. So this building the university industry connections, what does it mean in um, traditional way, thinking in traditional way. So there is a EU study of the industry-university partnership work, and I, I picked uh, one of the succeed, successful universities, the Alta University, which is the, the, the in Finland, in Helsinki, Technical Art and Music University. So this university has done this cooperation 20 years already, systematically organized. And uh, what they have learned during these 20 years. So first, it's, it has to be happened in a strategic level. So it's very important that um, when companies think 
of everything in a strategic level. So that the universities also think in a strategic level. So strategy in universities means the research and education normally, but also they could have the strategy for the company cooperation. And uh, that would uh, benefit a lot of this kind of cooperation if, if they can think on the strategic level. And always they have to build the win-win partnership so that the companies can get benefits and the university can get benefits. In fact, it should be a win-win-win partnership so that the, also the students can get the benefits of that. And uh, IPs, the, the, the patents of the student uh, ideas, IP rights, intellectual property rights. So that's a problem in many universities because they try to get these IPs, try to hold these IPs. And the companies, they are very sensitive of this kind of things. They would like to have the IPs in their production and in their business. And therefore, the lesson which has been learned in, in Finland is that forget the IPs, forget the, the, the profit motives, totally. So that helps the cooperation. They are not so important for universities <coughs> as they are important to companies. And then, so this means, this IP is that if you, when working with a company project, if you do an invention, so who owns the rights of this invention? It depends on country. I don't know how does it work in your country, but, but uh, if university tr try to take uh, that is not good. So then focus on future technologies. So companies always, when they develop something, they do the uh, newest technology, newest methods. Everything is uh, top level. In university, if the, you are educated by using some old technologies, some old methods, it doesn't work. And uh, teachers, use teachers who are who have deep understanding of uh, the industry. So most, many of the professors, uh, they have uh, their deep uh, but uh, narrow uh, competence on some research topics. And it is very good that they, they go very, very, very high and uh, they, they are very talented in these topics. But in this kind of cooperation, it means that they maybe cannot understand so well the, what the students need, what the companies need. And uh, therefore, there should be professors who have experiments, experience from the industry life, from the companies. And uh, the, the last one is to encourage students to multidisciplinary and multicultural cooperation. So this kind of multidisciplinary, so that there are many different uh, areas, humanities, marketing, technology, different technological areas, and uh, medical maybe, healthcare, and that kind of things, joined to the same group. That's quite normal in companies. So in universities, many times, uh, there are some kind of silos. So forget this kind of silos. That's a lesson learned in Finland. And uh, mostly the cooperation is built between the university and uh, some companies. One university and some companies around. So not with uh, companies and students, or companies and student union. And uh, maybe this is the uh, opportunity to us to improve, to develop something better. So it means the three angular cooperation, so that there are industry, there are university, and uh, there are the students. And this university cooperation means normally research, funding, and uh, that kind of things. And this is uh, tens of years have been done already. And uh, the university and students, it is education normally, what, what university and students do together. 
And uh, if there would be some kind of organization of uh, industry and companies to join to cooperation with the students directly. So that would be very effective in developing the, the university education and also the university education can help the companies to, to, to train their stu uh, students what they are taking. Students can build, their, can build their network to company leaders and to important pe persons in, in industry. So this kind of triangular cooperation would be more, more profitable. And I hope that uh, this could uh, develop also here in this university. So now, from the student's point of view, what does it mean? So I did this with my students in the entrepreneurship course here last week to ask a question how to combine academic life and job finding. So do you need tools, services, courses, events, networks, whatever? And we had a brainstorming in, in, in class and uh, we got a very nice results of that brainstorming. So this is now students' viewpoint of this cooperation. And uh, the, the, I categorized these uh, results to four uh, entities. The first one is uh, events for companies to come to the university. university campus. And the second is studies supported by companies. Here in the university, companies support studies. And the th third is uh, develop study programs for connections. How to improve the connections by developing the study programs here. And fourth, uh, open a website as a bridge between academy and industry very practical way. So, events for companies to come to university. So, the first one is the, of these ideas is the TEDx type talks from technological startup companies here in the university. So, if the company people would come here and give speeches to the students, everybody who would like to join, this would be very good uh, way to to network with companies between companies and students. In fact, uh, I remember in in Finland in early 1990s we had uh, this kind of uh, talk uh, series called Enterprise Forum. So the companies came to the university, the University of Oulu, where I come from, and uh, they get, gave the speeches there of their companies what they do and what they are going to do and everything. So the university had to book the biggest lecture halls, 300 seat lecture halls, so that all students and people would get the seat on the, these speeches. They were so popular. I think that also here, this kind of TEDx type talks could be arranged to students. Student, students meet company leaders. So if the company lead, leaders would come regularly, a few times a year here to campus, and take the students, maybe small groups of students, and discuss with them. So the company leaders, they can find the right students, what they take to the projects and to the internship and to the thesis work. And the students can see whether which company would be the best for me to try to get hired. So job fair festivals, this kind of festivals are arranged everywhere in the university center. I think that also in this university there are job fair festivals. And uh, these are good uh, situations, for example, in University Hall, there is a uh, regularly uh, this kind of uh, day in, in 
March, in November, October or November, and uh, the companies come, they have stands there in the university uh, uh, corridors, and uh, the, the students come and walk there, and uh, there are full of students in uh, university corridors when they discuss with the company people. It's a very good way to do this kind of networking. And uh, then the idea that the new companies would have the opening ceremonies in the university. So you can think that when some people have established a new company and they are very enthusiastic with their idea, this is the best idea in the world and we are going to go to the world and uh, change the world. So why not come in to the, to, to, to the university to tell open what they are going to do? Because again, they can get the right students to be interested in their company and it is easier to hire people to, to that company when needed. And to help to students to advertise themselves to the companies. So this is also very practical how to, to write a CV, how to advertise your skills and for example, through web pages and that kind of things. And then the second one, the studies supported by companies. So remember that these are my students' ideas. I have collected them here. So programs offered by the companies. So even the programs, at least courses offered by companies. So we can think that especially the big companies could do this so that uh, they have uh, they give their staff top engineers here to give the lectures on some area what they are needy what they need in their product development or production or marketing so that's a very good idea so in uh, my university in in Finland, in Oulu, in the 19, late 1990s, we had the Nokia, the, the uh, mobile company, in a very fast growing phase, late 1990s. So, the, in the best years, there were three donated professorships in our university, paid by Nokia, just to give the courses for the, what the Nokia needed and to do the research work for the Nokia needed. And it, it grew, grew a, a research laboratory, Central Wireless Communication, where there were 100 people doing the research work. And most of them did the, the projects of Nokia. And later, still, there is this CWC, but uh, now the Nokia is not uh, the, the, the main order. But, but anyway, this is the way how the companies can, can come to the, and support the uh, studies. So more internship uh, during the studies. So internship is uh, very interesting. In many cases, the internship happens too late. So when you are doing the thesis work or last years, so it should start in the very beginning. So in 1960s, I remember in Finland, some colleges, they didn't take in students who didn't have two years working experience, practical working experience. So it means that they, they are motivated to learn because they have the so-called, they have questions ready. They get the answers from the studies, but when they have worked two years, they have many questions. How to, can I do this better way? So this internship should be developed uh, and uh, be earlier than now. The company supported studentships. So in America, you know that there are the studentships that companies are support, supporting. So they they pay the university fees for some students, and only the, the best, the most talented students can get 
this kind of positions in the university. And uh, company visits, the students could go to the companies to see how does it work and how, what, how is the work and what they, and what, what they do and discuss directly with the company people. Maybe not only the, the bosses, but also the workers, so that they can see what the company life is. And then job hunting period as the final studies. So maybe, maybe you have not this kind of job hunting course yet, but this would be a good idea to have a course where you can give hints how to write the CV, how to discuss in the interview in the companies, how to maybe develop your social abilities, maybe how to learn how to lead a group, and uh, that kind of things. And then third is the develop study programs for industry connections, for improving industry connections, study programs here in the university. So a course of how to work in companies. This is a good idea, just a course for that working in the companies, like I told in the last slide. And cutting edge technology for learning and practicing what companies need. So some big companies, especially, they can bring here the university campus, their uh, laboratory devices, maybe some, some whole laboratories, where the students can learn this technology, what this company would need. So this kind of new, newest technology for learning and practicing. Uh, what companies need. And help from companies how to select the right major. So when the students come here in the university, which major would be best for me? So then just again go into the, the, the industry people to ask if I would like to have this kind of your job, what kind of major you recommend me? And again, this is also the way to network. So when discussing and asking this kind of, you can ask even to somebody to become their, your mentor. So mentors are also important. So even now you can go to the companies and, and uh, try to get some people interested in mentoring you. So that, for example, once a month you can go there, discuss what you have learned and uh, and uh, the, uh, ask uh, what they recom recommend me to learn next, and uh, how to learn, and what are the important things, and so on. So mentors are very important. So, so help uh, from companies. Okay, this I can already. The top leader students to support work practicing periods. So some students maybe can easily get uh, the, this practicing periods in the companies. And after that, they could help the other students to, to get the same kind of uh, practical internship periods in the company. Maybe some pr small projects or maybe the thesis work. And then hackathon events for promoting students' programming skills. So the university could arrange this kind of hackathon events. And when the comp companies would come here too, so the students could show how good they are in programming, how nice ideas they have, and maybe in this case show they can also show their personal abilities. And also these app developing projects to promote student skills. The similar can the students could show, you could show your abilities. The broader horizon and more logical thinking ability and more freedom to students for planning their studies. Maybe a little bit more difficult to arrange, but, but anyway, important ideas. And the, then the fourth one, the last one. A website for connecting students with companies. This is very practical. 
to promote local companies to the students. Some kind of web service, maybe with blogs and video blogs, maybe the user interface for companies, students, and uh, university staff, different user interfaces. And the students could promote themselves to the companies to, to prepare the CVs there, to prepare the videos, maybe blogs, maybe some samples of your apps you have developed, projects, so on. And that this uh, web uh, site could also mediate scholarships from companies to students. So to arrange, maybe there would be tens of companies and they arrange some scholarships for the students and students can apply and compete to get them. And to provide part-time jobs to students. So when the companies need some, some project staff for some projects, maybe programming, coding coders, so they could try to find through this the right students and arrange part-time jobs for those projects. So this was the student's point of view and uh, next the company's point of view. As I already told you, I have been an entrepreneur 12 years and uh, all the time as part-time entrepreneur. I am now shareholder in seven startup companies in Finland. So maybe I have to get some hints to you how to, how to go to, to the companies, how to show your interest in getting this kind of projects and uh, connections to the companies. So first, try to contact directly, just to yourself, especially when it is question of the small companies. Try to call to the right person. Maybe it is the director of the company, entrepreneur, or maybe it is uh, some person who is uh, responsible of uh, recruiting the new stuff. So be active and don't give up if you get connection at once, because this persistent, persistence you can show by don't giving up in these ways. And uh, job hunting is selling yourself. Do all what you have learned in the sales and marketing courses to sell yourself, to pack it your, yourself an attractive, with an attractive image, with the knowledge enough, and uh, then be brought, bold enough to go open with this image to the companies. So, you should be honest and uh, cheating will be revealed at least in the interview when you go to the, to the company. But uh, many companies, they appreciate this sales ability. If you, if you can sell yourself, they can, the company people, they can think that you can also sell the company products. And in small companies, all people should sell this idea, these products, services of the company. Therefore, this ability to sell yourself is very important. And never use mass, mass emails. So we, we never open these emails, we just delete everything. And in the worst case, we put them in the automatic deleting in the, from this address. Instead, uh, try to get a personal connection, personal emails, and uh, try to call, try to appoint face-to-face -face discussion. Because if you can get the appointment for face-to-face -face discussion with the boss of this small company, you have uh, passed many of your competitors. And use mentors, as I already said, your mentors are very important. 
So if you have these kind of mentors in companies, you can ask them to be your referee. You can ask uh, even that if they allow you to use their phone number in your CV or application so that the company people can call and ask what kind of student this is. And uh, try to get small projects first. Just the, the you know, the food between the door. So that you can show that what you, what you, what are your skills, what is your mindset, your personality to the company people. And use social media. This very good uh, channel, especially LinkedIn in the companies, is today maybe the major social media. You can sell yourself, you can get networks, and you get contacts and everything. This is from the company's point of view. And uh, then some ideas from the university's point of view. So the university teachers and researchers, as I have been tens of years in my life, so we cannot recruit you into any company. So you have to remember that companies make the decision by themselves, always. But we can recruit students to the projects with the company uh, funds. And in this kind of project, you can get the, the direct contacts to the company people, and you can build your networks. So try to get uh, this kind of relationship to the professor so that you can get, you can get hired to the company funding, funded projects. And uh, I've learned uh, long ago, ago that the grades are not, they don't, don't show your skills in real work. So I, I don't recommend you to, to get the low grades, but uh, anyway, you use strategic thinking. And if you are interested in some special area in your studies, so then comprehend, so emph emphasize your efforts to this special area so that you, that you develop this ability in your, and these skills. Because if you use your efforts to all courses, so there are maybe courses what you never need, and you have the highest grade on this course. So better to, to, to be strategic. So I remember when I was a student, so I was very enthusiastic electronic engineer. I decided when I was 12 years old that I'll become the electronic engineer. And I read the books of the Thomas Alva Edison and similar books. And I built uh, electronic devices and electrical motors and as a hobby. So I comprehended my, my, my efforts to the electronic courses. And for example, the, some AC current courses, I just passed. And I have never needed those courses what I passed only. But the electronics was my favorite, and I had no problem to get my job. So it is pity that uh, some professors see only your grades, and they value you only according to your grades. Therefore, the, try to keep some level in all courses anyway. So our honest desire as a university professors and your teachers is that you all would get good job and you can proceed in your life. So remember that we would like to help you if we can. So my message is on this speech. To students, be active. 
be enthusiastic when you go to the company to, to, to discuss with the company people. So be bold to, to promote yourself. Be honest. Never cheat. So that you can can witness your trustworthy. Study your personality. Study to learn what, what you are, who you are. So these personality skills can be developed, as you maybe know. So for example, the so-called 16 personality uh, method, which is easy to find in the internet, is a good way to analyze your personality. Just to analyze, the, for example, the introvert, extrovert scale, uh, the feeling and uh, thinking scale, the judging and prospective scale. There are some scales you can, can use, intuitive and observable scales. So when you know yourself, so you can, can develop your uh, strengths and utilize full your strengths. And then you can also develop your and strengthen your weaknesses. This is very important to try to develop yourself, develop even your social abilities, your management skills and uh, leadership skills, that kind of things. And to com companies, my message is that the company's future important team members are students. So if, if the companies work uh, wise, they try to hire their team from students. Because after you have been graduated, so the, 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 the best uh, students have already gone. Competitors have taken them already. But when you are students, you all are here. And the companies try to find the best first. Of course, I would like to say that all kind of uh, students, all students are needed in these projects. But, uh, but the, the best students are hired so that they are developed to become some kind of group leaders and, uh, and main engineers in the companies. So companies should come to the university campus to tell, to, to see the students and to tell what kind of education is needed here. Just coming here and telling they can improve the university education. And the, to professors, my message is that uh, that uh, we educate the students for your whole life. This study years, few years in the university is short time, but we can have the big uh, effect, effect to your whole life. Therefore, it is very important that we are responsible of this duty. And we should uh, ask your employers to come here to tell what kind of skills and abilities you need and uh, focus on those and listen to the entrepreneurs and companies. So this is my message to students, to companies, to professors. And uh, finally, again, Albert Einstein, learn from yesterday, live for today, hope for tomorrow. The important thing is not to stop questioning. Thank you.